there she is. Here we are. <clears throat> you look like summer. Well, <laughs> it is. <laughs> True, right. Yeah, it's, it's pretty mild today. Let me yeah, get my... Yeah, here's Robert. You're asking, oh, uh, where he is? No, here he is. There he is. Good. Oh, there he is. Hello. Fun lunch. <laughs> no, well, just some peanuts. <laughs> oh, how are the two of you? Yeah, just fine and dandy. Mm -hmm. Just waiting to deep dive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure deep dive into what, but. <laughs> well, what, what I've been thinking about lately is beauty. Hmm. And I have come to a conclusion, which was very interesting, actually, for me to come to. And that is that we see beauty. How to say that? Um, beauty is a, an emerging property of integrity. Is what I want to say. Well, and what's that, the context? It doesn't, I don't think it matters. I think that when we perceive something as beautiful, it is a recognition of the integrity of which, with which it is expressing, whatever that is, whether it's like nature that. or mm -hmm. uh, an artwork, actually. I think the whole art world has gone through this crisis of not wanting to be beautiful, but to be self-expressive. And so that's okay, you know, I mean, people can do that, but it it's not something that you would normally characterize as beautiful, maybe interesting or whatever, or revelatory to you or important or something, but beautiful is not usually the word that comes out of your mouth for that. Very um, nice. And yet beauty is one of the things that art has done has has supported in its existence it's been an expression of that integrity that we see um in an integral way and so i think that's shifted at least in some places but it was just really interesting to think about that um because you can't define beauty there's absolutely no way to say <laughs> what is beautiful but Anybody who says they have something beautiful to show you, you know what experience you're expecting to feel. Nice. Very. True. You, you recognize that immediately, whatever the, the context is or whatever the object is. So there's something there that we resonate to that defines that for us, whatever. And, and it's not specific. So it's not definable in the normal way so that's why the sense of integrity is so pleasing and so resonant um and it's not it, it's very internal it's very subjective and yet it's also there's a subjective piece to it because it can be shared <laughs> and you you have the expectation that what you see as beautiful most people will too and if somebody shares it with you, you have the expectation that you will share that experience, that it will be equally beautiful to you, even though you don't know what it is or how it's done or anything else. 
So there's got to be some thing there <laughs> that's not necessarily physical that we resonate with. Thoughts? I love what you're saying. Uh, Barbara Marks Hubbard, um, beauty, the word beauty was one that she identified always with e evolution. That e evolu and, and I was just reading a book, I think it's Brian Swim's uh, uh, Cosmogenesis, some, something along the lines that you're saying that that um, well, first of, uh, let me just say what's coming up, <laughs> Ra rather than try to put it in, in integrity, beauty and integrity. I I I delved into that once. Integer, the the, the and and integrity. The root of integrity is in is. Integer, if, if, which which is the essence of, which is the beginning of, which is the first unit of, which you know. So that in relationship with beauty is absolutely right on. Um, I love what you're bringing up. the The integrity of beauty, and when we see beauty, it taps into something very integral within us. So I'm just enjoying that feeling of integrity, of beauty. And and that and that it is an element of of evolution. <clears throat> that that's what she brought up and, and Brian included um, how, how did Barbara Mark Hubbard relate that to evolution how how did she make that connection she had I've been looking for the four words that she said about evolution and 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 I haven't come across them them yet but but beauty was one of them um that which evolves is an evolution toward a more complete beauty. It's, it's, it's more, I mean, that which is evolved tends to be more beautiful than what it evolved from in some way. And, and beauty can't really be described, <clears throat> but it has an integrity, like you're saying, an integer, a, 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 a beginning gives birth to something. I don't know how, what else to, I'm just scrambling at all the remembrances I have about evolution and Barbara and how beauty is, is as you said, is as integral beauty is as integral to evolution as any other feature of evolution is mm -hmm. more <laughs> more well, as an emerging property of integrity that would be true uh -huh. right I like that emerging property of integrity. Did did I say that? I know I just heard you say that. Did that's I say I, that? That's what did I said. Because it sounds like something I would say. <laughs> <laughs> it's something you should say. <laughs> so Robert, where are your thoughts on all those? Well, you're approaching it from more of an intellectual plane than I would. <laughs> okay, well, say, go ahead. That's, um, yeah. <clears throat> because I tend to think of evolution as being a fostering of greater complexity. 
Mm -hmm. It does. Just for one thing, it's got its story, the story behind it, <laughs> even if it, it evolves to something that looks simpler, it's actually more complex because it's a further derivation from a certain starting point that was more, you know, that seemed right. more complex in looking at it, but it becomes more complex no matter how simple it looks because it's further along in the process. And that bothers me, <laughs> you know, because sometimes I think things are beautiful just because they're simple. Um, so that, that's what I'm working with. I don't have any definitive answer. <laughs> okay. Simple. But there's a, there's a difference. Could we say elegant instead of simple? Just because the elegance mathematically is simple. It's a definition of simple. It is the, the fewest possible things you need to solve the problem kind of thing, um, which has a beauty to it. And so I, I would see those two connected in that way. And I think the, the emotional response that we have to beauty um, is really a validation of what Amy was talking about. If integrity has to be about connection to source in some kind of way, you know, in a way that really is elegant um, and really suffices, it's not superfluous in any way. Um, it's an expression of source. So yeah, so it it's a connection to and an expression of yeah, but Absolutely. not just connection to it's it's an expression of. But our our response is because we come from that same place. It's a recognition of that integrity is what I would say. That that's how we validate that because it's a visceral feeling. It's not intellectual by any means there's really much more emotion about beauty than intellectual stuff because it's a it's a response that you have in your body mm -hmm. about seeing it it's not just there's not i mean you can analyze it afterwards but the recognition that it's beautiful is an emotional response is a kin kinesthetic response very body centered so maybe along those lines, to get back to art, um, some of the most beautiful art is very simple. Very simple. Very simple. For instance, yeah. you know, the, yeah. in the Japanese calligraphy, but then the art within that form, um, you know, one line is drawn and it expresses everything. <laughs> maybe four or five lines and suddenly you have this vast right depiction of you know the reality of a flower say well okay the way i see that from what you were just saying is it's it's absolutely the end result of a a very long and sometimes arduous preparation by the artist you know a, a learning a discipline yeah, and to be able to distill what's essential. Basically, yeah, his whole body is being um, taught, you know, to have to, you know, just emanate the essences of this discipline. Um, because there's no way you could think your way through making such a line. It's impossible if it can't be done in one sweep of several seconds, it can't be done. And um, so in that sense, it, it does, although the finished, the product that's isolated <laughs> away from the artist, you know, the product can be seen to be super simplified. In fact, the story is absolutely complex. Um, because it doesn't start with just the artist learning. I mean, it goes back to his back, his genetic, but it, whatever. I mean, it yeah. it's never ending. It's the history of the human, you know, the human race. 
Um, I think that's how it connects back to source. Now that can be said about a flower as well. You know, the very simple beauty of that flower, the, you know, the, the, the flower that you're looking at, it simply stayed that way because it works. <laughs> so in a sense, it's been through exactly the same process of the, uh, of the artist, you know, over many generations of development. So, yeah, I can see how who was it you said said it you know likened um, beauty to evolution. I can see how that could have come forth in her thinking. Um, complexity is also a feature. Complexity and beauty. <clears throat> Barbara included in her, in in her in what she had to say uh, um, about beauty complexity because that which evolves can complexify that that's one of the definitions or one of the so and. I'm I'm not sh I'm just trying to grab hold of what's emerging in my consciousness and bring it out because I don't have an answer but but it has to do with but beauty has to do with but evolution has to do with complexity and beauty and higher consciousness or greater a greater expanse of consciousness some kind of way i'm i'm I, i'm just remembering pieces of what i've heard and learned so i don't pretend that i'm making any sense <laughs> but 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 the, what i'm saying is like color on a palette i i don't know what's gonna what is gonna reveal but but evolution, as a student of evolution, beauty and complexity are, are part, are, I don't know what I'm, what I'm saying. I'm just speaking what comes up from that place in me that is smarter than me. <laughs> That's beyond my comprehension. <laughs> <laughs> I got thinking about this because we really don't pay a whole lot of attention to beauty in our current life. I do. Um, maybe as individuals we do, but society as a whole really doesn't pay a whole lot of attention to it. There's sporadic outbursts in a, a particular building or um thinking about nature in some kind of way but when we do stuff to the world um beauty is usually not in our consciousness we just do stuff and it looks like what it looks like and we live with it um and the the noise is an unbeautiful thing <laughs> that really impacts us negatively and they've done all sorts of research and can prove it and yet we don't really pay attention to it or monitor it or engage with it in any real way because we're not thinking about beauty we're not thinking about silence or melody or those things that come from that space and yet those are the life enhancing things because i think they are connected to source that beauty is a a path and it, it can be manipulated because we can do that as human beings but when it happens naturally um, and when it's an integral part of what we do then it really does create that that sense of coherence mm -hmm. that you get from integrity i mean it just makes things fit it's it's of a piece you want to be there it belongs all those kinds of words work 
Um, and yet we've been, because of our inattention to that, it has allowed us to get away with things that we wouldn't get away with if we were paying attention to beauty. We would have changed or manipulated or designed them differently, done them differently, done it with different things, even whatever, to, to make it fit that that resonant space. Um, and I think we'd had a much better world for it. But I think that's also maybe a path out of some of where we are to just really see is what we're doing beautiful. Does it make the world more beautiful for what we've done? As opposed to just dumping that stuff over there because we don't know what else to do with it. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's part of the appalling thing about plastic pollution. It is so ugly. I mean, it is just such an incredible shock to the system to see it because it is just horrendously looking not to mention all the other stuff with it. You're saying the plastic in the ocean? Oh, it, in the ocean, in people's, in villages. I mean, wherever you see the plastic debris that is piled up, it is just got awful. Right. It doesn't matter where it is. It's just got awful. Um, and there's just nothing beautiful about it. And if if we were more resonant to that beauty thing, we would probably be more... Um, impassioned about doing something about it we've just taught ourselves to not see it not see the ugliness instead of recognizing that ugliness and working to make it beautiful what however we do that um i think that would have been would open up vistas of of dealing with this stuff that we don't normally think about i <clears throat> i remember deeply contemplating this a, a few ye years ago about beauty and e integral, e integer, e integer, uh, that, that, that word was prominent in, in, in my thoughts about beauty, because beauty and integrity and integral and integer are all the same thing, are, are all <clears throat> interwoven. And that integer is one. It's yeah, one. That's, yeah. Unity is where I would go with that as opposed to the number. I'm you unity is parts come together as one. The, I'm talking about e e integer, that beginning mm -hmm. where it all sprouts from. The, the beauty of nature, the beauty of God, the beauty of love, the, but but it's it's a coming out. It's not a I don't know putting together, but but a work of art is put together. But 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 I'd I'd rather stay in the natural realm mm -hmm. when we're talking about beauty because I think that's. The essence of beauty comes from nature. We we try to make beautiful things after contemplating nature. We try to put it on a canvas. Yeah, it's nature that's beautiful. Perhaps this has something to do with um, the quality of being radiant, or the quality of absorptive. Um, in other words, nature, is, you know, most of the elements of nature that we would say are beautiful, I mean, I'm thinking flowers or little kitten, you know, the things that are on the internet, um, they're radiant. There's something joyful and radiant about that um, organism. Um, the bottles that are squished underneath the tire of a car you know, with mud and any other oil and grease. I mean, it's ugly, it's dead, it's absorbed. It just totally sucks up any mm. kind of life. I mean, particularly walking around some neighborhoods in a city. I mean, it, you know, it's... Yeah. yeah. And it's... Um, 
And that's interesting too, because it's not just the ones that you would think, but it's also some of the the cheerful little Barbievilles. I mean, you know, the, <laughs> yeah, the rich yeah. suburbs that where everything has been so closely tailored that it's uh, yeah. plastic. We use yeah. the word plasticville. Yeah. Um, But the, this the, this radiance part of it, I think that life is extremely radiant, and that someone who is living to their potential, you might say, um, you know, uh, the the life force is buoyant and moving through them. It, it's radiant, and, and they're beautiful. And they're when beautiful. You that you, that's what you say. No matter how they look, they're beautiful. Looking, the look doesn't even matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas even the, well, even the most, quote, most symmetrical, you know, sort of classic beauty, if he or she is ugly inside, I mean, it comes right across. It's just, yeah. it's a sink. It's not, yeah. it's a trap. Say more about uh, absorption, the <clears throat> con contrasting with radiance, and and in the context of beauty, you you brought in uh, absorption. Well, okay, there's another angle to it. Um, I was talking about the artist, the one who practices for years to make that one line. <laughs> well, that's his life force radiating through. Now what happens, let's say I try to copy that. I'm absorbing everything about that actual movement by thinking about it, overthinking about it, planning, you know, scheming, how am I gonna get this done? <laughs> Hesitation, all those things that would stop me from being able to do it. Whereas if I were in a totally playful mood, perhaps playing with a four-year-old, I might just automatically do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I've and I've had that experience painting with 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 children. Mm -hmm. And um say, well this is how you do it. And then I look at it a little bit later and I say, wow, that's probably the most elegant, beautiful line I've ever done. <laughs> I, I think there's something more with contrasting radiance and uh, absorption. It's like, what, radiating the beauty out and absorbing, I, I mean, there's something about yeah, absorption. I, I would use the, the word sucking, sucking instead of absorption. It what? kind of trying to sucking. be more delicate than that but yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> sucking that that things that are not beautiful take from you where beauty gives to you yeah. well that's very different than a, a absorb um I'm, I'm, there's something in the word absorb that p plays a part in beauty or i don't know exactly what i'm now, you may be, you may be quite correct. I mean, maybe it's much better to use that word "sucking" because it's a visceral feeling of what of, what of we're the talking box. of drain right. pulling away, pulling out of you. You know, something that's right. valuable in your experience. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it really does you take don't want to suck out beauty. We're, no, we're when things beauty. are not beautiful, that's the point. When they're when they don't come from source, then when they're not beautiful, find beauty. You have to define beautiful because before you don't have to define beauty. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, There's something integral about beauty. Yeah, where I went with with beauty and that radiance piece that you talked about, Robert, is that if in and in nature. The, the beauty we see in hills, in trees, in plants and flowers are really about, and even in people, are really about the expression of all the cells in there and their joy in life and the integrity that that has. 
as a coalescent whole. Nice. So when it's destroyed by contrivance or falsity or, or um, manipulation or a lot of mental planning, all that kind of stuff, it doesn't have that resonance because it's not coming from the same place. And so the experience is not a gift. It's not a shared euphoria. It actually takes away, I mean, it absorbs that from you is what I, I'm hearing Robert say, that that experience actually pulls out of you that joy because it's not reciprocated. You have that expectation and it just kind of falls flat. So it's a diminishing, it's truly a diminishing experience for the observer. Am I right? Does that hit what you were trying to say? Yeah. I, I don't get what that has to do with beauty. Because beauty absolutely depends on the observer. If it hasn't been observed, then it doesn't exist in, in, in any one point of consciousness. You know, like in my mind, it doesn't exist unless I've observed it. That gets into quantum physics as well. That's a human-centric psychological context. Yeah, I would kind of say that if it if it's a living expression of beauty, then it doesn't need an observer. Hmm. Right. Because it's an expression from that source. Yeah. So yeah. when you're feeling joyful, you're feeling joyful. And you are beautiful, even though you don't see it. But anyone who saw you would see that beauty. So it's I observed by the expressor. Well, yeah, it's felt. I mean, I, I think there's so much of beauty that's really visceral. It's not, it's, I mean, we use our eyes, yes, to see it, but it, the response is visceral. It's, it's a body response. It's not a mental thing. That's right. It's a body response. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I get something in me flushes. There, there's a flushing when, when I behold something of beauty. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> just some to my cells. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the whole your whole body resonates with that. All the other life goes. Yes. I mean, it's, it's life right. loving life, <laughs> and recognizing, you know, the integrity of all of that. Yeah. Integrity, integer, source. Yeah. Coherence. Good feeling. <laughs> I am having trouble with integer though because it's so such a mathematical term in my mind. Yeah, well, I, it's only because I really took time to to dig into that and to find the essence of inter of integer of of integral of integrity of of the 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 beginning the essence. I mean, integer integrity. It's 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 all the it's, same yeah. thing. I mean, yeah, it's a mathematical term, but it's not a mathematical context in which I'm using the the word e integral. Well, integral I can get that makes sense to me because it's it's all the parts fit and they fit in a way that's that's vibrant and healthy and life enhancing and all of that. Um, so it it allows for that expression, but to make it Unity I can get too because it's a real connection to source and to life and to joy. It's an expression of joy. But integer is is so it feels so limiting <laughs> and, and solid. Uh, I know what you mean, but but I I remember spending time. Yeah, so the, I'm curious. I <laughs> came to. Um, yeah. With integer, um, let's see what Siri has to say. Integer, any of the natural numbers, the negatives of these numbers or zero. 
And the second one is a complete entity. Integer is a complete entity. That's I mean, closer, it's, for sure. Yeah. It references one, which well, is unity. Yeah, completeness is better. Well, but it, it, I, yeah, I, I but guess, it doesn't fit in with. Well, for the the completeness would suggest that there a connection that it's not just by itself and i that's i maybe what's bothering me because the the beauty is a shared thing it's okay. it's resonant in everyone who sees it so it's a shared experience well that has nothing to do with its essence i mean oh, with it does with what I, it I, is. I, I think it does because it's a recognition of that essence by other folks. Right. So it's a response it. to that. Yeah. So, and, and completeness would work for me in that regard. I could see that, that it's a, it, it's truly a, it's a connection, the unity, it's an experience of a recognition of the unity that we share, which is why it's integrity. Why, why that integrity piece is there because that's kind of what it says that it's all coherent it's all of a kind of a piece it all fits all those words kind of work um and i know when i'm doing drawings or paintings things sometimes don't fit <laughs> i really use that word you know just not right here <laughs> it, it, it interferes with what should be there um, a complete entity. So yeah, so putting things there should complete. And, and, well, and I've it, had that experience too, where it needs something. <laughs> I don't know what, but it needs well, something because it's not complete. It's it's a complete entity. It's integral. It's an integer. It it's not a. It's not a collection of or a combination of it's I, I don't oh. see it as the same thing as unity because unity has several parts that that come together. And from a sensing point of view, integral is is like things are birthed out of it. It doesn't make it's not something that somebody made up. It's it's an essence expressed and beauty is an essence expressed and it has integrity and it's integral to life yeah yeah i would agree with all that but the integer doesn't work for me i just can't it didn't can't. me either uh, uh until i really went into it and and realized it's one well it's complete i can get that I, I that's as far as I you know uh, with it. it just, yeah. it, it, uh, you know, and, is it? <laughs> yeah it's just the the uh I don't know well I, I'd want to introduce you know the another component that's in that's integral to every single example we've been giving which is time yeah I mean in other words I can show you a photograph of a of a of a say a sunset, and it's incomplete. I mean, it's like okay, that was one millisecond, <laughs> you know, whatever the hundredth of a sec second second um, exposure was. Um, I want to see the whole thing. The whole thing took minutes. Right probably less than an hour, but the whole thing took a certain amount of time and went through changes. So it came into being and disappeared. So there's evolution again. Yeah. You know, it's it's uh, yeah. changing um, patterns over mm -hmm. time. Because um, yes. the set okay. is beautiful because it has a living, a sort of a living component. It's It's evolving over time. A sunset 
the word evolution doesn't really apply to that's not an evolutionary process no i was talking about though evolving that that the that the what you see in other words your sensory perception of it is of an evolving you know um i mean becoming more serious. I'm not sure what you're saying. Well, I'm saying that this, that everything I can think of that I would think of as beautiful, it's less so if I'm just looking at a still picture of it. That's a photograph. <laughs> right. It's not the essence of what you're talking about. Although the essence comes through in just a, you know, a, a brief, smattering a horse running you know across a, a, you know a field uh one of the most beautiful things i ever saw was a fawn being born mm. and then watching for half an hour as it discovered life or whatever it discovered because it was absolutely you know it was extraordinary. <laughs> yeah. It's spending its first, we watched for maybe 30 minutes, <laughs> its first 30 minutes of life. And it was just, it was all new. It was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> what I'm saying is that to me, to really experience the beauty of something, I go through almost that same experience. I'm seeing it for, for the first time. So a sunset falls within that realm of experience. But um, an artwork can too, if I sit with it for half an hour, because it'll a great artwork will change consistently as I'm watching, as I'm looking at it, mm -hmm. as I'll see further and further, or pull apart. I was watching a, a video. A man explaining, you know, how um, Bach worked in his composing. Mm. And this is where playfulness comes into it. He decided that um, he was going to insert a little signature in throughout his process, B A C H, and he would insert those notes in that order throughout. You know, many pieces. H and um, the, the the teacher the presenter was saying that H in the German lexicon if the, or the musical lexicon um, is the same as like B B sharp or B flat. You know, in in the English mm -hmm. system, so that you, they actually use the term H. So he could do that. He could transcribe B A C H, and they represented actual notes. And then he played that and showed how that was, you know, punctuated various points throughout various pieces that he did. And then his alliteration, you might say, of, you know, ex exploring different, as different ways of presenting those same basic, you know, note changes. And um, I just, once you know that story, and perhaps we're affected by it even even not knowing we're, we're affected by those rhythms, um, then it becomes, you know, you listen to something and it's, it, it's, it's an alive experience. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Nice. And it also speaks to integrity because if those notes did not fit, they would be jarring. It would not be of a, of a whole. Mm -hmm. Right you would really see that it would be a separate thing inserted in there but it had to be just right in order to be integrity to have be integral and have the integrity that it needed to actually be expressive of you yeah. which brings out that's with, hilarious which, well, the person who discovered that must have just been like <laughs> evidently others did too and they had, they had a lot of a lot more trouble making it work for instance Stravinsky <laughs> huh. or no no was it 
it wasn't Stravinsky. It was, um, oh, well. Anyway, he, he, he showed how it was worked out for this particular composer. And then he showed that it actually did show up throughout at least one piece that he'd done. <laughs> So, so Kat, Catherine, what you said brought up for me vibration, the uh, yeah, yeah, vibrational element of beauty. Yeah, the resonance. Yeah, of a piece yeah. of music of yeah, yeah. that yeah. which is integral. Or well, and everything has a frequency, not just music. Sure. So but, yeah. yeah, but but the point is. The resonant, the, the vibrational re resonant mm -hmm. yep. Yep. of beauty, the vibrational resonance of beauty. Yeah. Let's think about that a minute. And something like that is even going on within the natural world, like butterfly wings. The way they're basically the wings are kind of made up of scales. Yeah. Down at the molecular level or, um, they and they you get an overall color but really it's made up of Please. very small bits of of color that are all different <laughs> and they're <laughs> they're reflected and that's why you get kind of, it they it's there's kind of an iridescent look even though it's a monarch it's primarily black and little bit of white and orange, um, but it, there's sort of a iridescence to it because you're actually seeing, you know, hundreds of colors. Yeah. 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 And flower petals, I'm sure are the same. I mean, I, I haven't actually read that, but, but I would assume it would be. I've, I've never delved into the vibration of color. Yeah, and there's that going on as well. Complementary colors next to one another will also cause certain experiences with your, you know, to affect certain experiences within your, your seeing, you know, your vision. <sighs> what a wonderful world we're part of. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh. So I've been working out there in the garden. I'm going to head back as soon as we're done. Um, it rained two inches last night, but it oh, was wow. it was kind of a gentle two inches. In other words, it was persistent. <laughs> over several hours. If that had come in 20 minutes, we would have had a major flood, but it, you know, over two hours, it was very easily handled by the, the landscape. So I had to rush out and get some compost to put on that soaked through soil. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna go away for a week and I wanted to, um, you know, I wanted to hold that water in. So um, my, what was the point I was getting at? Well, one, I've been working all morning on it, but two, that um, that too is a, you know, the building of a garden is something that my wife and I are very, you know, conscious of right now. And of course, Annie, Annie you would, would be as well, because, you know, you miss, you miss that, that sequence of events and and um, and what comes through is just constant life and color. I'm I'm curious why you put compost on it rather than not compost. I meant, mulch. I meant mulch. Sorry. Oh, okay. I'm a little fuzzy headed from being out in the sun. All it I I I meant mulch. Something okay. to hold the you know, the moisture in. Right. But I'm beginning to see more and more, you know, how this is all a process. 
you know, all, all of one's life. <laughs> and I start seeing various components, component processes. And I can view those with, you know, certain amount of delight and, under, you know, and growing understanding. Um, and I begin to see how those integrate with using that integer and the integration again is in our, you know, where our words begins to integrate with other aspects of my life. They're all interrelated to one another in that way. And then how just speaking about it now, I'm extending that integration to other minds and perceptions, you know, and um, beginning to understand, you know, this complexity of of life that we live within, you know, this this huge body of interaction. They say that a person's life can be that every experience from a person's life could be um, could be saved, which I say uh, uh, in a in a memory bank of one peta peta petabyte um, memory, yeah. and that's an awful lot of memory bytes. But on the other hand, um, I don't know. I kind of doubt that. <laughs> Because then you're assuming that one person is maybe integral, but it's not separate. That one person is absolutely integrated with everyone else. Um, you know what I'm saying? That you know, it's 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 hard to pull anything out. The more I think about the garden, and the more I think about how I lived with my wife, it's very you know, it's impossible to pull any one thing out and look at it separately without realizing that I'm cutting things short. Yeah, it's a system, systems view. Yeah, so it's, it's basic systems view. But I think it has a lot to do with beauty because if you're viewing any aspect, whether it's moving or a result, you know, some painting, for instance, the beauty, I think, is how it reflects the story. It reflects what came before and what may be coming beyond. <laughs> yeah. it, it reflects it. it it's, it's um, what should I say? It's naked in a way so that, you know, these other aspects all come through it. So in that sense, it's kind of simple simple meaning innocent meaning you know what you see is what you <laughs> i don't know now i'm rambling on i'm, I'm not trying to but I, I i like i like your process and i like what's coming out even though it might not be you know it's not ready to be packaged and set off huh <laughs> it's still <My> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not ready to be packaged either. I've got some more years to go here. <laughs> um, you're talking about rainwater. I'm going to do a little segue here just because I want to share this because I've been so impressed. A guy's name is Brad Lancaster. And he has a ton of books on how to um, landscape your area for water conservation. But it's so much more than that. He really understands how water falls from the sky and how to manage it when it does that in a way that supports the life on the planet. And he's very beautiful about it. Wow. He's got a whole bunch of books. Um, and one of them is how to change your 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 own landscape or household for in nine days, something like that, seven easy steps. So I haven't looked at that book, but it's it's just really thinking about how to manage flow and how to actually direct it in a way that that works for life. And he's just elegant about that. He lives in Tucson, and he did that for his little area, his block, few blocks around his house. 
and did that long enough to see the change. So then he went to the city council in Tucson and got them to agree to do that as a city. Mm -hmm. So the whole city is using its streets as arroyos to channel water and then directing that water at various places. And they have just increased the green, like amazing. And yeah. it, is there a name for that new process yet? That you're um, of? Well, it's not new, it's really old. Um, and it's harvesting rainwater is what he will oh. call it. What, what his epiphany was is that in Tucson, they get more rain, they get more water as rain than they actually use. But they are buying water and spending $80 million getting water from the Colorado River 300 miles away because they don't have enough. And he said, that's foolish. <laughs> we have enough. We just need to learn to use it and to manage it. And so that's what he's all about. So, and his ideas, I guess, were used in um, uh, village homes in California, Davis, California. There is a community there that was built ecologically. And so they used his water catchment things. And I have a, a video. They got five inches of rain in an hour or something like that. And how that rain did not flood. It pooled into all of these places that they designed to have it pool in. Yeah. And it absorbed. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, to go back to your, one of your initial- and that's beautiful. <laughs> it's gorgeous. <laughs> to go back to one of your initial statements about, you know, what isn't beautiful? Well, it's basically, a large part of, of how our current civilization works. It's out, of, out of integrity. It's totally out of integrity. And it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it seems to be, you know, you could say it's single-mindedly, you know, focused on making money. Um, I mean, there are lots of different things you could say about it, but uh, it's also, it's simply out of integrity. And therefore, I mean, I, I love this example you just made. I'm going to look this guy up. Oh, he's wonderful. Because it's yeah. so true. And we've we've been doing that around our property. We used to flood a lot more than we do now because particularly Terry and I, but also some of our um, neighbors who are close friends, we've been redirecting the water, con con controlling it so that it, there aren't any areas where it becomes super um, concentrated and therefore a flood. Yep. Now we maybe we haven't had the worst storm lately, but um, we'll see. But we've had some pretty powerful ones that, yeah. you know, four or five inches, and. Uh, it wasn't none it wasn't a flood anywhere <laughs> yeah so yeah. there's so much we can do if we just pay attention and that does make things beautiful it does i mean it just does when they get ugly it's because we've not paid attention to that kind of stuff our, our yard has never been by yard I, I mean you know the the, the common property for our um, community has never been greener and and more lush yeah. And yeah. actually, we're running, we're, we've had fewer inches of rain this year. I mean, we get a lot of rain here. It's 45 to 50 inches a year. Yeah. But it's been running lower this year. And yet it's still, it's blossoming. Yeah. And that's, that's why, oh, that's why soil is so important. <laughs> and all of that water stuff, because when you do it right, it has resilience. It has the ability to withstand some of this stuff. If you don't, it just doesn't. Yeah, we do have yeah, to stay yeah. on top of it. Like we have to, we have one more culvert we're going to have to change. So that's that's expensive. Yeah, we'll do it yeah. in the next few years, I think. Yeah, he did curb cuts. That's how he started, because he he realized that the water flowed down the street along the curb. Yeah. So he just made curb cups where he wanted the water to go. You know, and 
and it worked and he went and told the city what he'd done which was very illegal and all of that and they to their credit realized what he'd done and decided to jump him <laughs> yeah 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 and i want i mean I, he did it several years ago i don't know what the dates are i should should look and see but it was probably a different culture time so it made it much easier yeah just one other thing that i've been thinking about and maybe we can hold this to i mean i'm gonna have to go pretty soon but hold it till next time which is i've been reading um what arthur Arthur C. What, what's his name? Carl Carl Sagan and also Clark um, Arthur yeah. Clark, Clark the the author and both of them have this had this extreme fervor about you know the, the the you know a very positive view toward what humanity could accomplish and toward what humanity could be. They really did have an amazing viewpoint. And so what I've been thinking about is that we were on that trajectory. Yeah, and we got hijacked. Through the 70s and 80s, and then the, the 90s, when we seemingly had a clear-cut way even to get through, you know, even to provide the money because, you know, the Cold War was over, you know, um, but lots of different things. At the UN, the UN really fell apart during the 90s. Um, wasn't really visible until 2001, but it was pro it was processing all the way through the, the decade. Um, our federal government was doing the same thing. Um, during the 90s, things just kind of, I mean, Arthur C. Clarke, he, he, they, he was writing books that based, he, he was a very clear scientific thinker. He was writing books in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, based on the, you know, the pattern of the evolution of the technology, so that his book 2010 had us taking a voyage to, you know, had his hero taking a voyage to, um, to Jupiter. Um, and it was, you know, there was this great buoyancy in, in thinking, you know, this, this stuff is possible because we, you know, when he was writing it, they'd just been through the moonshot, you know, which was an absolute wonder. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, it just, it really amazes me that in the night, by the nineties, not just in the nineties, but by the nineties, that whole evolutionary fervor, <laughs> you know, that wonderment, that joy in discovery was, had just about been squelched completely. Yeah, the 90s are the Me Too generation. Was that what that was? When that I haven't put it, it'd be interesting to talk that through. I haven't, I haven't really thought it through. It just struck me last night and I was just, yeah absolutely floored when reading these two books. I just took out two books by those guys and just breezing through various parts of it. I said, wow, what we lost. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know. This, I don't know if this is relevant, but something is knocking at my brain to, to that about capitalism. Mm -hmm. about us, about our nose hitting right up against the fact that there's not unlimited growth, that unlimited growth is not a reality possibility. And, and somehow it relates to putting a halt on the evolutionary fervor that we had because all systems are go. And they're not. Yeah. That's a yeah. good point. Yeah. Yeah. 
and we defined growth. I, I'm working with We All, um, which is a, a worldwide group that's trying to figure out uh, new governance and economic systems. And they were working with Scotland and they have a hub in Scotland that broke off to be independent. And they're having trouble because Scotland wants the We All group to define growth under this degrowth process. And they're struggling with what that looks like mm -hmm. because the, the society around them is saying we have to grow, right? How are we going to do that? And degrowth is saying, no, we don't. And then they're going, well, then how did, what does that look like? How can we do that? And that's and, a valid question. Well, and what we were talking about um, is the difference between deepening and becoming more elegant versus what Ani was talking about, the bigger and better, which is how we've defined growth. Growth is it's got to be bigger and better. We have to have bigger numbers, more people, more involved, more whatever, um, instead of being much, much better at what we're doing, using less energy. That could be a degrowth strategy, using having no waste. That can be a degrowth strategy because you've got to really work at that. Those are things that just happen. It takes a lot of effort and energy, but it shifts the, it, it takes that same energy and shifts it into supporting the system instead of running without paying attention to the system. Yeah, because there's no such thing as degrowth in nature, in life. Well, it, well, learning is, is growth, but it's not bigger and better. So we're always learning. We're always adding in that way. But we're not, it doesn't change our structure. It doesn't require more resources in that same kind of way. Well, it's, it's, it's a matter of changing your, your perspective points. I mean, economies need to grow. But what's, so the one we've got needs to grow. No, economies need to grow. Well, what do you mean but by the problem? The, the problem is you oh, need. This to is define, the next time we got to talk about this. You need to define economy because an economy that only has in mind human beings making money is very different from an economy that takes, you know, takes in mind Drivability. every part yeah. of life. Yeah. Very but what does growth look like in see, and that's kind of well, that's the discussion because for me it would become being more elegant in relationship as opposed to extractive. Yeah. Well, let's hold that for next week. Let's hold that. I'll write it down. We'll do that next week. Good. Good. Because we can't be extractive. No, that doesn't work. Forward. Yeah. yeah. You gotta be put it back in. Yeah. <laughs> right. You can't. Uh, see you, you later. With that, I'm leaving. <laughs> okay. Bye bye.